This is the white paper for Terra Money, Stability and Adoption by Evan Kirikas, Du Quan, Marco DiMaggio, and Nicholas Platias, released in April of 2019. Abstract. While many see the benefits of a price-stable cryptocurrency that combines the best of both fiat and Bitcoin, not many have a clear plan for the adoption of such a currency. Since the value of a currency as a medium of exchange is mainly driven by its network effects, a successful new digital currency needs to maximize adoption in order to become useful. We propose a cryptocurrency, Terra, which is both price-stable and growth-driven. It achieves price stability via an elastic money supply enabled by stable mining incentives. It also uses seniorage created by its minting operations as transaction stimulus, thereby facilitating adoption. There is demand for a decentralized, price-stable money protocol in both fiat and blockchain economies. If such a protocol succeeds, then it will have a significant impact as the best use case for cryptocurrencies. Section 1. Introduction the price volatility of cryptocurrencies is a well-studied problem by both academics and market observers. See, for instance, Liu and Stravinsky, 2018, Makarov and Shkor, 2018. Most cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, have a predetermined issuance schedule that, together with a strong speculative demand, contributes to wild fluctuations in price. Bitcoin's extreme price volatility is a major roadblock towards its adoption as a medium of exchange or store of value. Intuitively, nobody wants to pay with a currency that has the potential to double in value in a few days or wants to be paid in a currency if its values can significantly decline before the transaction is settled. The problems are aggravated when the transaction requires more time e.g. for deferred payments such as mortgages or employment contracts, as volatility would severely disadvantage one side of the contract, making the usage of existing digital currencies in these settings prohibitively expensive. At the core of how the Terra Protocol solves these issues is the idea that a cryptocurrency with an elastic monetary policy would maintain a stable price, retaining all the censorship resistance of Bitcoin, and making it viable for use in everyday transactions. However, price stability is not sufficient for the wide adoption of a currency. Currencies inherently have strong network effects. A customer is unlikely to switch over to a new currency unless a critical mass of merchants are ready to accept it. But at the same time, merchants have no reason to invest resources and educate staff to accept a new currency unless there is significant customer demand for it. For this reason, Bitcoin's adoption in the payment space has been limited to small businesses whose owners are personally invested in cryptocurrencies. Our belief is that while an elastic monetary policy is the solution to the stability problem, an efficient fiscal policy can drive adoption. In addition, the Terra Protocol offers strong incentives for users to join the network with an efficient fiscal spending regime managed by a treasury where multiple stimulus programs compete for financing. That is, proposals from community participants will be vetted by the rest of the ecosystem and, when approved, they will be financed with the objective to increase adoption and expand the potential use cases. The Terra Protocol, with its balance between fostering stability and adoption, represents a meaningful complement to the fiat currencies as a means of payment and store of value. The rest of this paper is organized as follows. We first discuss the protocol and how stability is achieved and maintained through the calibration of miners' demand and the use of the native mining Luna token. We then dig deeper into how stable mining incentives are adopted to smooth out economic fluctuations. Lastly, we discuss how Terra's fiscal policy can be used as an efficient stimulus to drive adoption. Section 2 multi-fiat peg monetary policy. A stablecoin mechanism must answer three key questions. How is price stability defined? Stability is a relative concept. Which assets should a stablecoin be pegged to in order to appeal to the broadest possible audience? How is price stability measured? Coin price is exogenous to the Terra blockchain 
and an efficient, corruption-resistant price feed is necessary for this system to function properly. How is price stability achieved? When coin price has deviated from the target, the system needs a way to apply pressures to the market to bring price back to the target. This section will specify Tara's answers to the above questions in detail. 2.1. Defining stability against regional fiat currencies. The existential objective of a stablecoin is to retain its purchasing power. Given that most goods and services are consumed domestically, it is important to create cryptocurrencies that track the value of local fiat currencies. Though the U.S. dollar dominates international trade and forex operations, to the average consumer, the dollar exhibits unacceptable volatility against their choice unit of account. Recognizing strong regionalities in money, Terra aims to be a family of cryptocurrencies that are each pegged to the world's major currencies. Close to Genesis, the protocol will issue Terra currencies pegged to USD, EUR, CNY, JPY, GBP, KRW, and the IMF, SDR. Over time, more currencies will be added to the list by user voting. Terra SDR will be the flagship currency of this family, given that it exhibits the lowest volatility against any one fiat currency. Kyrgyz, 2018. Terra SDR is the currency in which transaction fees, minor rewards, and stimulus grants will be denominated. It is important, however, for Terra currencies to have access to shared liquidity. For this reason, the system supports atomic swaps among Terra currencies at their market exchange rates. A user can swap Terra KRW for Terra USD instantly at the effective KRW slash USD exchange rate. This allows all Terra currencies to share liquidity and macroeconomic fluctuations. A fall in demand by one currency can quickly be absorbed by the others. We can therefore reason about the stability of Terra currencies in a group we will be referring to Terra loosely as a single currency for the remainder of this paper. As Terra's ecosystem adds more currencies, its atomic swap functionality can be an instant solution to cross-border transactions and international trade settlements. 2.2. Measuring Stability with Minor Oracles Since the price of Terra currencies in secondary markets is exogenous to the blockchain, the system must rely on a decentralized price oracle to estimate the true exchange rate. We define the mechanism for the price oracle as the following. For any Terra subcurrency in the set of currencies C equals Terra KRW, Terra USD, Terra SDR, miners submit a vote for what they believe to be the current exchange rate in the target fiat asset. Every lowercase n blocks the vote is tallied by taking the weighted medians as the true rates. Some amount of Terra is rewarded to those who voted within one standard deviation of the elected median. Those who voted outside may be punished via slashing of their stakes. The ratio of those that are punished and rewarded may be calibrated by the system every vote to ensure that a sufficiently large portion of the miners vote. Several issues have been raised in implementing decentralized oracles, but chief among them is the possibility for voters to profit by coordinating on a false price vote. Limiting the vote to a specific subset of users with strong vested interest in the system, the miners can vastly decrease the odds of such a coordination. A successful coordination event on the price oracle would result in a much higher loss in the value of the minor stakes than any potential gains, as Luna stakes are time-locked to the system. The oracle can also play a role in adding and deprecating Terra currencies. The protocol may start supporting a new Terra currency when oracle votes for it satisfies a submission threshold. Similarly, the failure to receive a sufficient number of oracle votes for several periods could trigger the deprecation of a Terra currency. 2.3. Achieving Stability with Consistent Mining Rewards Once the system has detected that the price of a Terra currency has deviated from its peg, it must apply pressures to normalize the price. Like any other market, the Terra money market follows the simple rules of supply and demand for a pegged currency. That is, contracting money supply, all conditions held equal, will result in higher relative currency price levels. That is, when the price levels are falling below the target, 
reducing money supply sufficiently will return price levels to normalcy. Expanding money supply, all conditions held equal, will result in lower relative currency price levels. That is, when price levels are rising above the target, increasing money supply sufficiently will return price levels to normalcy. Of course, contracting the supply of money isn't free. Like any other asset, money needs to be bought from the market. Central banks and governments shoulder contractionary costs for pegged fiat systems through a variety of mechanisms, including intervention, the issuance of bonds and short-term instruments, thus incurring interest expenses, and hiking of money market rates and reserve ratio requirements, thus losing revenue. Put a different way, central banks and governments absorb the volatility of the pegged currencies they issue. Analogously, terra miners absorb volatility and terra supply. In the short term, miners absorb terra contraction costs through mining power dilution. During a contraction, the system mints and auctions more mining power to buy back and burn terra. This contracts the supply of terra until its price has returned to the peg and temporarily results in mining power dilution. In the mid to long term, miners are compensated with increased mining rewards. First, the system continues to buy back mining power until a fixed target supply is reached, thereby creating long-run dependability on available mining power. Second, the system increases mining rewards, which will be explained in more detail in a later section. In summary, miners bear the costs of terra volatility in the short term while being compensated for it in the long term. Compared to ordinary users, miners have a long-term vested interest in the stability of the system, with invested infrastructure, trained staff, and business models with high switching costs. The remainder of this section will discuss how the system absorbs short-term volatility and creates stable long-term incentives for terra miners. 2.4. Miners absorb short-term terra volatility. The terra protocol runs on a proof-of-stake POS blockchain, where miners need to stake a native cryptocurrency Luna to mine Terra transactions. At every block period, the protocol elects a block producer from the set of staked miners, which is entrusted with the work required to produce the next block by aggregating transactions, achieving consensus among miners, and ensuring that messages are distributed properly in a short time frame with high fault tolerance. The block producer election is weighted by the size of the active miner's Luna stake. Therefore, Luna represents mining power in the Terra network. Similar to how a Bitcoin miner's hash power represents a pro rata odds of generating Bitcoin blocks, the Luna stake represents pro rata odds of generating Terra blocks. Luna also serves as the most immediate defense against Terra price fluctuations. The system uses Luna to make the price for Terra by agreeing to be counterparty to anyone looking to swap Terra and Luna at Terra's target exchange rate. More concretely, when Terra SDR's price is less than 1 SDR, users and arbitragers can send 1 Terra SDR to the system and receive 1 SDR's worth of Luna. When Terra SDR's price is greater than 1 SDR, users and arbitragers can send 1 SDR's worth of Luna to the system and receive 1 Terra SDR. The system's willingness to respect the target exchange rate irrespective of market conditions keeps the market exchange rate of Terra at a tight band around the target exchange rate. An arbitrager can extract risk-free profit when Terra SDR equals 0.9 SDR by trading Terra SDR for 1 SDR's worth of Luna from the system as opposed to 0.9 SDR's worth of assets she could get from the open market. Similarly, she can also extract risk-free profit when 1 Terra SDR equals 1.1 SDR by trading in 1 SDR worth of Luna to the system to get 1.1 SDR worth of Terra SDR, once again beating the price of the open market. The system finances Terra price making via Luna. To buy 1 Terra SDR, the protocol mints and sells Luna worth 1 SDR. By selling 1 Terra SDR, the protocol earns Luna worth 1 SDR. As Luna is minted to match Terra offers, volatility is moved from Terra price to Luna supply. If unmitigated, this Luna dilution presents a problem for miners. Their Luna stakes are worth a smaller portion of total available mining power post-contraction. 
The system burns a portion of the Luna it has earned during expansions, while Luna supply has reached its 1 billion equilibrium issuance. Therefore, Luna can have steady demand as a token with pro rata rights to Terra mining over the long term. The next section discusses how the system offers stable mining incentives to keep the market for mining and demand for Luna long-term stable through volatile macroeconomic cycles. 2.5. Miners are compensated with long-term stable rewards. Miners play a foundational role in the security and stability of Terra. They provide the former by participating in POS consensus. They provide the latter by absorbing short-term volatility and Terra demand. Stable demand for miners is a core requirement for both security and stability. To achieve this, the protocol aims to offer stable and predictable rewards in all economic conditions, booms and busts alike. The network is best off when it can consistently compensate those that protect it. The protocol has two ways of rewarding miners for their work. Transaction fees. All Terra transactions pay a small fee to miners. Fees default to 0.1% and are capped at 1%, meaning that transacting with Terra in e-commerce will be much cheaper than transacting with traditional payment options such as credit cards. Seniorage, Luna Burn. When demand for Terra increases, the system mints Terra and earns Luna in return. This is called seniorage. The value of newly minted currency minus the cost of issuance, which in this case is zero. The system burns a portion of earned Luna, which makes mining power scarcer. The remaining portion of seniorage goes to the treasury to fund fiscal stimulus. To understand rewards from the perspective of a miner, we look at the basic calculus one has to go through to determine the viability of a long-term commitment to mining on the Terra network. After fixed costs, the profit or loss from a mining operation for a single unit of mining power, one luna, comes down to rewards minus cost of work for that unit. A bit more formally, during a future work period, lowercase t, profit or loss for a unit of mining power equals uppercase p open parentheses lowercase t close parentheses equals total rewards open parentheses lowercase t close parentheses over luna supply open parentheses, lowercase t, close parentheses, minus unit mining costs, open parentheses, lowercase t, close parentheses. Frequent alterations between profit and loss, positive and negative, uppercase p, open parentheses, lowercase t, close parentheses, would create highly unstable mining demand. The goal of the protocol is to make this calculus easier and more predictable. With that in mind, most of the uncertainty in uppercase P, open parentheses, lowercase t, close parentheses, comes down to the first term, i.e. unit mining rewards. As a consequence, unit mining rewards are the primary consideration for making a long-term commitment to the network. Stable unit mining rewards produce stable demand for mining, while volatile unit mining rewards produce the opposite. By default, there is uncertainty both in total rewards from fees and in the supply of Luna, so both terms contribute to the volatility in unit rewards. The first graph shows simulated weekly transaction volume and its annual moving average. Transaction volume can be thought of as the GDP of the Terra economy. The economy experiences rapid growth followed by a severe multi-year recession that wipes out 93% of GDP over three years and requires six years for full recovery. This scenario is a stern test. If it were describing the price of Bitcoin, it would be by far the longest bear market in its history and tied for worst in terms of drawdown, equal to the 93% drop between June and November 2011. While we think that Terra's adoption-driven demand will be far more stable than Bitcoin's speculation-driven demand, the stability mechanism has been designed to confidently withstand Bitcoin-level volatility. The second graph shows transaction fees and the Luna burn rate, the two levers used by the protocol to smooth out fluctuations in unit mining rewards. We observe that both move opposite to the direction of the economy, which is also the default direction of unit mining rewards. The third graph shows the annual moving average of unit mining rewards. The growth target we have set in this example is 15% annually. As was designed, 
unit money rewards experience steady growth and low volatility, unperturbed by the cycles in Terra's GDP. The adjustments in fees and the lunar burn rate have successfully absorbed the expected volatility in unit mining rewards and created predictable growth. This is achieved with fees that average less than 0.5%, with a momentary peak at the 1% maximum, and a lunar burn rate that averages roughly 50%, meaning that on average 50% of seniorage is granted to the Treasury.